Hey everybody, it's Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. So I'm gonna compare the buying a remote timer like this Velo uh, RCS211, which I'm $49 on b and I've owned this brand before. It's worked great with my Canon cameras. Um, so far it works great. So what you can do with it basically is you can use it as a shutter release, or you could actually create a time lapse like every three seconds if you got fast moving clouds, let's say. Um, and you could create a time lapse later by bringing into your computer, manipulating the raw images or whatever you do, and create a video out of it. And I've done it many times and it works great. And it's a very easy device to you just basically connect it in and you press start and you walk away, come back and process your images later, which is fantastic. What I'm gonna compare it to is in here in your application list. Actually, before we go into the application list, I want to just show you something. So just kind of remember this, and I'm gonna write this down actually. We're at 30th of a second, F2.8, ISO 125, and our white balance is at 5500K, okay? So let's say that's the perfect setting I wanna do for my time lapse. Although it's just kind of a shooting a picture of my blinds here, which is not very exciting, but pretend it's just this epic sky that we're gonna take a picture or time lapse of. So what I'm gonna do is go into our menu, application list, and we're gonna load the time lapse. So I'm gonna pick custom. And when we look at it, we've got, we're still at a 30th of a second, but now we're at F8. Um, and also our ISO has gone to auto. And if we look at our white balance, uh, it's at 2800K. So white balance has changed, the ISO has changed, and the F-stop has changed. That's not cool. Um, that uh, can bring a lot of confusion because you might just start your time lapse thinking you had it all set up right and your time lapse is screwed up. And this has happened to me many, many times. I'm like, oh, I forgot because it doesn't honor the settings that I had before. Oh, I don't, it's a Sony camera, it's a Sony app, it's not made by a third developer. Sony should be able to figure this out so it carries the settings over. Um, when we go back the other direction, another weird thing is gonna happen. But let me demonstrate something else. We're gonna go into the menu. Then we go to application settings. And here's one of the biggest drawbacks of um, this is the number of shots that you have. You only can go up to um, 990 and that's it. So if you're doing a time lapse, let's say if you're doing really fast moving clouds and let's say instead of every three seconds, maybe every two seconds, you're doing it um, very quickly. The interval is happening very fast. Well, you're gonna chew up through 990 shots really quick, um, especially Let's, in fact, it, it'll do the calculations for us. So if we have it like every two seconds, you could see that it's going to take, it'll be a 41 second um, total time lapse. If we decrease the interval from two to one second, now you can see it'll be a total of 41 seconds time. And you can see the duration, that's 16 minutes it took to actually record the time lapse. The big benefit of all this is if you're lazy and you don't have time to process your um, time-lapse images on your computer, let's say After Effects or whatever you're using to process them, um, you can have the camera do it for you. And that's one of the big benefits of having this is if you're in a hurry, or let's say not in a hurry when you're shooting, but when you're in a hurry later to process the image and get the video done, well then just choose you know your file format and it'll create a movie for you, which is, fantastic. Now that we've kind of got the pros and cons of each out of the way. Um, this is more expensive. This uh, very easy to set up. You never lose your settings. Whereas, you know, we can also record um, time lapses for as long as your battery will go basically. Whereas this one, we only have 990 shots. So if you're doing a lot of stuff in daylight, um, you might be limited. At nighttime, it's not a big deal. I mean, if you're shooting astrophotography at night, well, 999 shots, that's no big deal because <laughs> um, if you're holding your shutter open for like 30 seconds, it, it, it's hard to shoot 999 shots or 990 shots. What I want to do now is let's go ahead and get out of there. And then what I'm going to do is exit the application. So let's kind of remember what we've got here. We've got 30th of a second F8 auto ISO, and we've got a white balance of 2,900, I believe. So let's go ahead and exit the application. So now we've gone 30th of a second F8, um, 
ISO is 125, and now we're at 5500. So going in and out of it, you're going to lose settings and you're going to get very confused. And that's one of the things you just have to deal with. But in terms of a review of this unit, like I said before, I've owned these before. They work fantastic. You could put, I think there are two AAA batteries the last like years, <laughs> seriously years. Um, it's great if you just, you know, want to do like bracketing shots. One of the things in this camera I've noticed is if you're doing like HDR, you're doing brackets. Um, well, there's no countdown timer of like two seconds because let's see if I can actually do this. Um, so if I'm in photography mode and I go to my drive mode and then I go down to one of these bracketed, let's say this one right here. Well, in order to start this, you know, I, if I press the shutter half, if I press the shutter down, you see it went through and took all the bracketed shots. Well, I just created camera shake. Well, with this, it does the same thing. And I didn't create any camera shake because it's on a cable. So that's one of the benefits of this because Sony, the way they've got their camera set up, you can't do like a two second timer release on a bracketed shot. So I got another reason yet to own something like this. So that's pretty much it. Just kind of the pros and cons. I know summer's coming up. I'm going to be doing a lot of time lapses myself. It's usually when I do it because I usually don't do it in the winter when it's cold. <laughs> I love doing it when I go camping and stuff like that. So I wanted to get this in to take a look at. Um, like I said, I've owned these before. If you look at the reviews on B&H, they're all great. Everybody loves this one. And I think it's just about the only one with this particular connector. Um, if I pull it out. Um, it's not like your Canon one, so if you have an old one from your Canon cameras, it's not like the three pin or four pin connector, um, mini jack connector. It's it's more of a USB style, um, multi interface type of connector. That's pretty much it. Oh, one other thing, I just finished my Sony A7S II course. It's now available for sale. It's uh, over six hours long, and I cover just like everything. <laughs> In great detail I think you'll really enjoy the course um, so I'll put a link to it in the show show notes below of where you can go purchase the course um, I've already gotten one unsolicited um, review of it already and he really liked it so um, I'm very happy with that this is like the best course I've ever done and there's one section in it I think um, which is just fantastic. I asked Matt Scott from mattscottvisuals.com uh, to actually do some grading of some of my S-Log footage that I shot with this camera. And he goes through in great detail one of the shots. Um, and it's just fascinating to watch him work. So that's also included in the course as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, have fun shooting some time lapses. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.